in the spring of 2010. Susan Conrad scaled her world down to an 18-foot sea kayak and paddled the 1,200-mile ribbon of water known as the Inside Passage. She courageously paddled marathon distances for weeks on end, forged friendships with quirky people in the strangest of places, and then pretended not to be intimidated by 700-pound grizzly bears and 40-ton whales. Susan Conrad launched an arduous journey north to Alaska. On it, she discovered the depths of her own strength and courage. She then wrote about her adventures in the nonfiction chronicle of her journey entitled Inside. It is a memoir for the ages. My craving for solitude began as a very young child. And I come from a somewhat dysfunctional family and have a history of betrayal and, and neglect. And I grew up on a 500-acre dairy farm in upstate New York and was pretty much unsupervised during my childhood. And so I had free reign to roam and romp through these 500 acres of fields and woods. And, and I think that's where I got my sense of adventure, just traipsing out you know, in the wilderness with not, not a care in the world. When I made the decision to paddle the Inside Passage, I was at a point in my life where I felt like I was playing small and settling for less than what I was capable of. And I eventually came to the conclusion that that put me at a huge risk for never actualizing my dreams. And that was a risk that I wasn't willing to take. So I just decided to go for it. And I'm really just an ordinary gal who made this commitment to bridge the gap between my, my dreams and reality. The distance between those two is called action. I believe that we're all infinitely capable of accomplishing anything that we want to in life. We simply need to believe and then we need to act on that belief. Yeah, I'll never forget the first time I ever slithered my hips into a long skinny sea kayak. It was a calm summer day, 1991, and four of us had set out to paddle across a large glacially fed lake in northwest Montana. And even though it, the boat felt quite a bit wobbly underneath me, what immediately resonated with me was this sensation of wearing the boat, of being one with the boat. And I loved how I could just reach out and touch the water whenever I wanted to. One of the more seasoned paddlers came up alongside me and she started giving me tips, coaching advice. And pretty quickly, I started to relax and things started to click for me and the motion of paddling became almost second nature. And that was monumental at the time because I was one of those classic textbook klutz kids that had zero athletic ability. I mean, I couldn't dribble a ball or slide into home base to save my life. And I was one of those kids that was often picked next to last uh, by the team captains and all the school sports. And I think that's why I gravitated more toward the individual sports. It was something that really spoke to me and that I seemed to be picking up rather easily. And that became such a game changer for me because I started taking off on these multi-day adventures, you know, four or five days at a time. And I just loved that pairing life down to the basics sort of thing where everything I needed to survive was either on my person or, or in that kayak. And I thought, wow, this is like backpacking on the water without the heavy weight on my shoulders and, and the blisters on my feet. It was just a phenomenal feeling. The Inside Passage is an extraordinary coastal route with some of the most spectacular fjords and complex coastlines in the world. And the southern end begins in the lower Puget Sound of Washington State. It winds its way through the San Juan Islands and crosses into Canada and reaches pretty much up the entire British Columbia coastline. And eventually it jumps into the Alaskan Panhandle. It ends in a, a charming little community known as Skagway, where you literally run out of ocean about a 1,300 miles from where you began. When you travel through the Inside Passage, you'll be visiting an area with like wide ocean passages and these narrow steep walled fjords. 
you'll probably see glaciers and icebergs, dozens of waterfalls, and if you're lucky, you'll see porpoises, dolphins, whales, maybe even a bear or two. It's a land of incomparable beauty, and it's a marine ecosystem that will just knock your socks off. I believe that anyone who's done anything somewhat major in their lives has at some point had a mentor or a guide to help them along the way. And my mentor was a man named Jim Chester. And he led this incredible life of adventure and exploration. And he paddled the Inside Passage also solo in 1992. And he was a huge inspiration for me to do the same. And when I started planning my own expedition, Jim helped me tremendously with logistics. He lent me thousands of dollars worth of charts, helped me plan the route. He even followed me religiously on my satellite tracking device so he could log in on, on Google Earth and see where I was at you know, any given moment in, in real time as I worked my way north. And because he'd paddled the Inside Passage himself, he it was as if he had this finger on the pulse of what I was experiencing at any given moment. His involvement on all these levels added such a lovely element to everyone that was involved with this journey. I named my kayak Camellia after the chameleon lizard. So these lizards have eyeballs that rotate 360 degrees independently in their sockets. So this metaphorical name that I gave her was more about this collaborative vision where I hoped that, you know, combining my straight ahead, dead ahead focus and determination, she would have this all encompassing view, just scanning the horizon, looking ahead of us, behind us, both sides, just just keeping us safe as we paddled the Inside Passage. She's fire engine red. She's long and lean and, and tough as nails. She weighs 58 pounds, soaking wet. She was the love of my life. She was my, my transportation, my home, my confidant. She was, she was my best friend on this journey, my BFF. Paddling the Inside Passage was a journey that took me not only north to Alaska, but inward, where I eventually discovered the depths of my own strength and courage. And, you know, at times I, I paddled through this land of magic and solitude amongst whales and icebergs, and, and other times I faced real dangers, storms and big seas, enormous ships, ever-present bears, and just, all these challenges that at times were more than I had bargained for. And my journey took me 66 days to paddle from Anacortes, Washington to Juneau, Alaska. And it was a distance of 1,148 miles, to be exact. And it was totally self-supported in that I carried all of my own gear, I set up all of my camps, and I orchestrated all of my resupply boxes. So th these were essential items that were, you know, shipped ahead from my home base to ports of call, these towns that I would paddle into to retrieve my supplies that were mailed ahead. Oftentimes I experienced this social vacuum where I didn't see another human being for days on end. And then other times I found myself avoiding the tens of thousands of people that would, you know, throng the streets in these ports of call that I would paddle into to retrieve my supplies. And as difficult as parts of my journey were, the Inside Passage is a place that I have hopelessly fallen in love with that continues to, to draw me back. It's a place that I will never, ever tire of visiting. So my campsites varied from picture postcard perfect to marginal, like I think I can make this work, to you gotta be kidding me. The all-time low point of the trip, the most harrowing event would put me on a 50-mile stretch of water in British Columbia known as Grenville Channel. Real narrow, steep-walled fjord. It's a couple hundred miles south of the Alaskan border, so it's pretty much in the middle of nowhere. It's a stunningly beautiful portion of the Inside Passage, but it's also the wildest, 
steepest and most remote section of the entire route. And on my 38th day of this expedition, I was practically eaten alive by black flies, forced to paddle 40 arduous, unintentional miles because of these territorial mama grizzly bears that had outwitted my intended campsites. I'd become mildly hypothermic. I was battling these gale force winds and torrential downpours. I had this total meltdown and came so close to just calling calling it quits, just throwing in the towel and aborting the trip right there. Definitely a low light of, of my journey. The first word that comes to mind as a kayaker, seeing a, an enormous cruise ship come towards you is vulnerability. You're just so small and vulnerable. And when I first encountered cruise ships out on the ocean when I was paddling alone, what immediately struck me was how incredibly fast and quiet they are for how enormous they are. And if you compare the, the difference in size between the two craft, it's, it's mind-boggling, right? My kayak is 21 inches wide, it's 18 feet long, and, and I sit literally just inches off the water. And some of the bigger cruise liners are over a thousand feet in length, and they tower 200 feet above the water. But as long as I'm, you know, tucked away along the shoreline, then, then I'm safe for the most part. But you can't always be close to shore when you're paddling the inside passage. There were times when I needed to cross major shipping channels. I was kind of like this proverbial chicken crossing the nautical superhighway. It can be definitely a hair-raising experience. When I think of the most magical moment on this journey, that puts me at my very last campsite. And I had chosen this small, crescent-shaped pebble beach. I'd pitched my tent, I set up camp, and I was surrounded by these brilliant pink wildflowers. And I had snow-capped peaks hanging above me. I had a delightful babbling brook not too far from my tent. And I had sweeping views of Juneau, which was my final destination, and then it was only 15 miles away. And there was even a small pod of humpback whales playing in this bay out in front of me all night long. So it was hands down my favorite campsite out of the entire trip. And to this day, it's where I go to when I need that, that mental time out and I need to go to my, my happy place. It's really an honor for me to be able to share my stories and images with the, the guests on board Princess Cruises. And it's a bit surreal that I'm doing this while sailing over much of the same waters that I paddled in, in 2010. And everyone on board Princess Cruises is on an adventure, right? We're all on this grand adventure. And it doesn't matter how you access the Inside Passage. You know, whether you arrive on foot or via a kayak, on a cruise ship or a hot air balloon, you know, it, it doesn't matter how you get there. What matters is that you follow your passions and you keep an open heart and mind to this beauty and grandeur that you're gonna see. And hopefully, you'll be inspired to want to cherish and protect that beauty and grandeur for future generations of adventurers. A question I'm commonly asked is why? Why paddle the Inside Passage and why on earth would you want to do it alone? Well, the Inside Passage is somewhat of a holy grail for today's sea kayakers and that in itself was a huge draw for me to want to consider paddling this route and taking on this challenge. That, because it's there sort of thing. But Mostly it was about this combination of circumstances that was unraveling in my life at that time. And I'd like to read a short excerpt from my memoir that captures that pivotal turning point in my life. No turning back now, no matter how many powerful reality checks flashed in front of me. The big 5-0 birthday was looming depressingly close. I was pitifully out of shape and still nursing my wounds from a series of losses that had left me with a raw, lingering ache. In addition to the recent death of my father, a close friend had died, another had moved away, my cat had been eaten by a coyote, and my long-term relationship was falling apart. I had withdrawn from the paddle sports business that had defined me for 10 years and felt a strong need to reinvent myself. I was single, jobless, fatherless and restless, desperate for new doors to open.